So thanks everyone. My name is uh, Gilles Fedak. I'm a researcher at uh, INRIA, which is the French uh, National uh, Research Institute for uh, Computer Science. And my research background is in parallel and distributed computing with a focus on how to build distributed computing infrastructure uh, on the using internet resources. The work I'm going to present today is actually a joint work with uh, Hai Wu He from the Chinese Academy of Science. I don't know if Hai Wu, you are here. Uh, yes, here, so he's the guy here. <laughs> <laughs> and this talk today is about how we can build a blockchain-based fully distributed um, cloud. And what I would like to, my goal also today is to give you a perspective from the infrastructure point of view, which uh, I think is very uh, uh, important. So, as you know, Ethereum allows you to develop distribu applica distributed applications and systems that run on the blockchain. And the blockchain gives this application some very nice properties. Applications are going to be autonomous, they are going to be resilient, secure, and then there's also this distributed consensus. So that's a great thing, that's great promises. In particular, sometimes we're talking about a supercomputer. But actually what's happening when you try to move your existing application to the blockchain is that you face the fact that, in fact, you are offered very limited um, computing capacities. Uh, for instance, storage is quite expensive, it's spare, uh, you have a slow uh, execution, very high uh, latency, if you need communication through uh, the, the, the transaction. And so that's really a limitation. <coughs> um, and so, and so the question is, uh, uh, how can we uh, I mean, uh, alleviate this? And that's especially an issue if you consider the fact that uh, there is a huge computing power which is given by all these uh, the, the miners. So there's really a gap, and the objective of this work is also to try to give all this computing power back to the application that needs it. So the objective of uh, iExec it's to provide blockchain-based distributed application access to off-chain computing resources uh, when they need it. So in terms of computing resources, we're thinking about CPU, we are thinking about data access, application, in particular focusing on uh, compute-intensive application, services, and so forth. And to do this, of course, we can take advantage of the blockchain and try to organize a global market for computing resources. So we'll think it as a kind of Airbnb for servers, where everyone will be able to put its own servers and use uh, someone else's servers. And so that's still a cloud in the sense that you access through the blockchain to the computing resources on demand and uh, as a pay-off, as a pay-as-you-go basis. And so this idea of uh, building a distributed cloud, this is actually very timely. At the moment, what's happening with the cloud computing is that it's very centralized on data servers on big data centers. And I don't know what's the situation in your respective countries, but in France, for instance, if you want to set up a new data center in Paris area, uh, the answer is simply no. Not enough room, not enough power, forget it. <coughs> and so this leads to a situation where you have all those data centers that go in very remote area, you know, to have either free energy or free cooling. I mean, cheaper energy or free cooling, like Iceland in Europe or Tibet in, the, in China, for instance. And so distributed cl cloud computing is also about relocating those data centers closer to the data producer and consumer. And just to give you an idea of you know, how we could build some next-gen data center, distributed data center, these are some pictures coming from people we are working with. So on the left, you have the Rutgers University. They set up a data center on the rooftop of their building with solar panel, and this is fully, uh, you know, low power processor, batteries, and this is fully energy autonomous. On the right, oh, sorry, on my left, <laughs> so on your right, this is kernel computing. The black box that you see here is both a server, a server, and a heater. So this is actually the CPU, you know, it's the CPU uh, energy, which is warming when doing 3D rendering, which is warming your apartment during winter, winter time. So we can distribute the data center, it's feasible. And more is coming with edge for computing. Of course, the goal of iExec is to, is to make those, you know, to be able to, to, to have those kind of infrastructure to be run uh, on the blockchain. 
So how to do that? Actually, the technology uh, to build a distributed cloud is already there since many times. We used to call that desktop grid computing. Uh, it's the idea of using uh, PCs on the internet when they are idle. And it's very mature technology. So for instance, doing those everything to do the distributed cloud, you have security, virtualization, you can chip VM images, you can even do quality of services, you know, high level things. So for instance, in Europe, we had the European Union funding the uh, European desktop green infrastructure. We had about 11 different sites in Hungary, France, Denmark, etc., totaling uh, 200,000 computing nodes. And this was available you know, to the traditional e science uh, uh, infrastructure, such as the LH shift. So we were able to transparently execute many applications coming from finance, biomedical research, mathematics, high energy physics, etc. So in my research uh, team, we used to push this idea in every possible direction. We did parallel computing on the internet, MapReduce computing on the internet, quality of services for execution when machines are volatile, etc., etc. So for this work, what is uh, interesting for us, these are two pieces of middleware, basically Extreme Web HEP, which is, if you want, the production version of these ideas. It's done by uh, Oleg Lodijansky at uh, the IN2P3. It does task management. And the other one is BDU that does data management. So the way we are working uh, at the moment, mostly you know, experiments and proof of concept and see what's going on. So we have the regular stack, if you want, the application that are not specially blockchain based, the resource mi management middleware, and, and of course the executing um, I mean the, 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 the actual machines. And what we do is that we put Ethereum in between and we try to see what's going on, what is difficult, what is challenging, or what is easy. And so that's basically the result. So on the left part you have what is super easy, the gauge, you will show it in green, and on the right part, my right part, it's what is red, it's what is really challenging. So resource publication, this is basically, you have you know, resource description language so very well uh, uh, standardized, and you basically translate this into some sort of smart contract and put it on the blockchain, so fairly easy. Resource provisioning, just add the flag that gives the status of uh, the, the resources. And then it gets more tricky. So for instance, match, matchmaking is, you want to be able to say this, this application that requires this amount of memory can run on those resources. So you have to browse some whole the blockchain. And then things get real tricky with scheduling. So simple scheduling. So scheduling is you have a list of tasks, you have a list of machines, and you want to build the execution plan. So things get really tricky when you need, you know, advanced scheduling, uh, yes, advanced scheduling with multi criteria. So things like um, I'm ready to. So I want the fastest execution possible, and I'm ready to pay for that. It's getting really uh, compute intensive and memory intensive. So in our use case, we're also working with uh, an application. It's called uh, EFAS. This is a framework for doing finance uh, analysis. And the interesting thing here is that it does a lot of machine learning. So a lot of machine learning is both data intensive and compute intensive. So here, of course, you're not going to make it on the, the blockchain, and you need to go uh, offline. Of chain, sorry. And the good thing is that once if a service is ready, their customers will be able to, to rent it directly on the blockchain. And because this application is going to be autonomous, it will fetch itself the resources it needs on the blockchain to execute it uh, off chain. Okay, so our test bed for doing this, it's the Grid 5000, it's the French uh, uh, infrastructure dedicated for research in, in distributed systems. So we are very lucky to, to have this at our disposal. It's actually a distributed cloud. It's nine sites, and we have 100, uh, about, of course, 1,000 uh, nodes, 8,000 cores, and um, yes, and, uh, and so it's really great to do you know, scalability tests and these kind of things. And we have a dedicated 10 gig uh, network. And so the last, I mean, the, 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 the bottom in our use case, uh, it's we want to use the, the Steamergy uh, servers uh, to run this. So, um, so Steamergy, what they are doing, it's a, it, this is actually the, this server is a furnace. So it pre-warm the, 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 the water before distributing this in the building. And we hope to, to do demo it in no November at the supercomputing uh, conference. And that will be for the first time in the history of blockchain, a smart contract with 
whose side effect is to warm a swimming pool. So, yeah, yeah amazing. <laughs> this is true, this is true. <laughs> this is La Butte in Paris. So based on those early um, experiments, yeah, that's a sketch of what the future is going to be for us, most certainly. So from what I, um, what I think is that we're going to have something like a, a side chain because we need you know, some sort of a new consensus for what's going um, off chain. We call that proof of contribution. Important thing is that there are many information that you need to make it run, uh, but you know that are not necessarily uh, relevant with respect to the, to, the, to the provisioning contract, if you want. So for instance, everything that is about task execution, this is meaningful when you want to establish the fact that the computation went right, but it's not really meaningful with respect to the, con to, to the contract that provisioned those resources and asked for the, 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 the execution. So I, want to, I think we need uh, some dedicated uh, uh, sidechain for this. We also have some very specific workload in, uh, in, parallel, um, in parallel computing you often have things that arise really in burst. So, uh, so we have to, 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 to be able to optimize for this specific workload. And, and last thing is that the consensus can be very different for uh, parallel computing. You know. In some cases, in parallel computing, that's totally okay to have a, a fraction of your application that gives you wrong result. Just, it just depends on the application. So we must be very flexible with respect to this. Okay, so just to conclude, distributing the cloud, um, I mean, it's also give us some new opportunities, and that's very important. So as I said, I'm repeating myself, but infrastructure matters. And so as we can set up the rules, that's our own game. So we can do whatever we want. So why not, for instance, think of uh, an infrastructure that would be energy positive, you know, that would produce more energy than it consumes? I mean, that's just up to us to decide this. Okay, so just to thank some... Uh, uh, some dudes, and one showing a blockchain lab, DACA, and the French team who has been uh, very supportive uh, with us. Thank you very much, Gilles.